All right, hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here. And uh, hey, I wanna shoot a quick video for you guys, and it might not be that quick, but I'm gonna shoot a powerful video for you, something that uh, I think so many people need to learn about uh, on back pain. And again, I'm Dr. Kyle Loveless, a Wellness Way affiliate doctor with uh, Queen City Health Center here in Charlotte. My wife and I, Dr. Holly, have a, a clinic in Matthews and one in South Park. And the reason I'm shooting this video today is because a lot of people, or a lot of you have been at home all the time and uh, sitting a lot and, and changing of lifestyles and we're seeing a whole lot more back pain than ever before. And really back pain is the number one reason uh, people go to a doctor. It's one of the top reasons people go to a doctor. I actually found out that, so I shot a video last week on eczema and when I was looking at statistics for back pain, I actually found out it's the it's right, it's a th the third leading reason actually. I used to always say it's the number one reason. It's the third leading reason people go to the doctor um, right after skin problems. I didn't realize skin problems were actually that uh, big of a deal, so that's a big deal. So we're gonna dive into back pain today. I have an awesome PowerPoint for you guys to really start to understand back pain. And really the reason I'm doing this is that you can become your own health expert. I want you to know when you have back problems, how to figure out what's actually causing it, and at the same time, start to evaluate what you can do to um, get results from it instead of just going to the doctor, taking medications, um, things like that, if that makes sense. Makes sense to you guys? Cool. All right, so we're gonna dive into uh, back pain. Let's do it. Let me get my PowerPoint going for you guys. Cool, all right. Okay, so this is our whole purpose and mission of doing everything that we do, to offer freedom by teaching people to take control of their own health, that you become your own health expert so you can understand what health actually is, and when you get that, then you can start to teach other people, and so our prayer is that you're gonna learn this stuff, you're gonna start to tell everyone you know, you're gonna love it, you're gonna share it. Hey, if something interests you today that I said that really um, helped you, please share this, because this helps other people, there's other people out there with the same, um, dealing with the same things. So here's some statistics and really the cause on back pain. This is from the American Chiropractic Association website, and it says worldwide back pain is the single leading cause of disability, preventing many people from engaging in work as well as every other everyday activities. Look at some of these statistics here. I think this is so big. Back pain is one of the most common reasons for missed work. And, and for me as a, as a chiropractor, I really it blows my mind because it's the easiest thing for us to help people with. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that comes into our office gets rid of back pain, but I am saying the majority of back pain, I'm seeing upwards of 90% that comes into our clinic or any good chiropractor really, is going to be able to get rid of back pain. It's like the simplest part of chiropractic. It's not all that chiropractic is, but it's a very big part of it. And so just coming in and getting chiropractic care could change literally missed work days. One half of all working Americans admit to having back pain symptoms. 264 million lost work days in one year. So let me say that again. There's been 264 million lost work days in one year just from back pain. And that's just what's been recorded. That's two work days for every full-time worker in the country. That's huge, okay? Back pain can affect uh, all ages. Most cases of back pain are mechanical or non-organic, meaning this, that it, was, it, was caused, uh, it wasn't caused by some serious issue like a major car accident or a fall or, a, or something like that, or even arthritis, infections, fractures, cancers. Most of them are, not, are, are mechanical and not organic in nature. And then the other thing I want to point out that worldwide years lived with disability caused by low back pain has increased 54% between 1990 and 2015. So what do you think has changed between 1990 and the, in the late 2000s? Well, we have become a very move, we've gone from a very moving society and, and doing things all day to technology where we sit the majority of our day. And I've said this all the time, but the 90% the of the stimulation and nutrition and everything to your brain and your spinal health is movement. Movement of your spine is the only way it will stay healthy. If you don't move your spine, it literally breaks down, degenerates. So sitting is actually the new smoking. It's one of the worst things that we can do. But I also wanna point at this, that so it says years lived with this disability caused by low back pain have increased, okay? That means people are living with back pain, not actually doing something about it. And one of the worst things that patients, I hear somebody tell me when they come into our clinic is that they say, yeah, I have back pain, but you know, I can handle it. It's not that bad. And we'll sort of go to set goals and I'll say, hey, if you didn't have back pain, what, what, what's it preventing you from doing, in other words? And they'll say, ah, not much. I can still handle my daily life. But, but, but when I say this, when I ask them the second question, I say, well, if you woke up tomorrow and you never had back pain again, what would you be able to do better at 100%? And you know what they tell me? 
they start listing all kinds of things. Well, I could sleep better at night. I could do my work better. I would be less fatigued at the end of the day. I, would, I wouldn't want to uh, uh, snap at my wife or my spouse at the end of the day. I'm going to have a better life in general. And that's huge because what we're saying is we're okay with living at less than 100% is what you're saying when you're saying, I can handle my back pain. So if you have any back symptoms at all, that tells you there is a problem and we wanna find the root cause of that problem. Problem. This is the big kicker here, guys. If everybody just quit going to their doctor for back problems and started going to a chiropractic clinic because we know it's such a huge percentage of change, and this is actually some of the medical research has proven this, and this is would be one of the things I think would help the opioid epidemic the most because the reason people have been on opioids, the most common reason is for back problems, specifically back surgeries. And that comes from way, doing way too many of these things at the medical uh, doctor's office. When you go to the chiropractor, I think it's like 80% less chance of ever having a back surgery. Low back pain costs American at le Americans at least 50 billion in healthcare costs each year, okay? And it lost wages and decreased productivity, and that figure easily rises more than $100 billion. Crazy. So we know that's a big deal. Now, what causes back pain? So there's a lot of causes for back pain. I'm gonna go through the things that we can really af affect and address right now. I'm not gonna, you know, you can have cancer and it can cause back pain. You can have kidney stones or kidney um, problems and it can cause back pain. I wanna talk about the mechanical stuff in the spine that we can actually address now and that you can do something about. So the back is a complicated structure, bones, joints, muscles, and everything else. You can sprain ligaments, you can strain muscles, you can rupture discs, you can irritate joints, you can create, um, can you shut that door too? Um, you can create uh, inflammation in those joints, create arthritis, things like that. Those are gonna be your main causes, okay? We're not gonna go into like the kidney problems or bone loss or blood clots or any of those things today, okay? So, oops, wrong button. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about spinal anatomy. So to truly understand why you have a back problem or why somebody would have a back problem, you actually have to know the area. And this is what I talk about. Becoming your own health expert makes it to where when you go to a doctor with back problems, you can start to have an educated uh, understanding of what your back should be like as they talk to you about it. So this is just a diagram or a couple diagrams here. But this is a diagram right here, spinal anatomy. And this is the low back from the side. You can see the guy has a box on his low back there, okay? And your spine, just the bony structure, you have vertebrae, and those vertebrae um, need to be angled, and they sit in between each vertebrae is a disc. Now that disc is a, is a kind of a fluid substance, substance with electrolytes and water, and that fluid substance is like a cushioning, it's kind of like a jelly uh, substance. Around that jelly substance are ligaments, and those ligaments keep the fluid in, keep the disc in. When one of those ligaments tears, that's what they call a disc hernia, it, and the fluid gets out, that's what they call a disc herniation. If they slightly tear, it can kind of bulge outwards, and that's what they call a disc bulge. Okay, does that make sense? So it's when the fluid in your disc actually gets outside of the ligaments, they call it the annulus fibrosis, when it gets outside of those ligaments, it can now irritate nerves, create all kinds of um, pain syndromes and things like that, and stresses in your body. Behind the vertebrae, you have another joint called the apophyseal joint, and those joints connect the back part of your spine, and that's where you actually mostly get most of your movement from, okay? These are the joints, and they don't have a disc in there. They're a synovial joint, and they move just like your knee moves, okay? That's what allows you to go front and forward, back and forth, twist, all those things, okay? And now those joints, if you get too much arch in your back, can actually, you can rub those joints, and, and I call it jamming them up, but it, ultimately what happens is it creates irritation in those joints, Irritation over time creates degeneration and inflammation. And that's where you can have back pain just from having too much arch in your back. But you wanna have a nice curve just like you see here, okay? And then out between the, the vertebrae body right here and the back part right here, the spine, comes the nerve. Now your spinal cord goes right through the spine and the nerves come out like branches from a tree right through these little holes called the spinal or the vertebral canal, and it comes out of these holes, and then that goes to your organs, your tissues, your cells, your muscles, every, every part of your body. Remember, your brain controls everything, and the way it interacts with everything else in your body is through this spinal cord and those individual spinal nerves. Pretty cool, right? That's one of the main ways it interacts. So um, taking care of that, those areas is very, very important. If you have any damage to these nerves, it can not only cause organ issues, it can cause pain, it can cause all kinds of other health issues as well. And that's where we see people with digest back problems having digestive problems, or people with low back issues starting to have bladder control issues, or um, uh, sexual organ function issues, or things like that, or even tingling numbness in the legs and the pain part. Okay, and you can see this other diagram here of a good, healthy 
um, kind of complex of the disc, bone, and everything else. Okay, so that's what you want to see. So now you can get a picture of what your low back looks like in the, at a bone at the bony area. Let's look at the muscles. Okay, now when we look at the muscles of the low back, I think this is really cool to realize how intricate and 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 um, in depth it actually is. So I'm just gonna blow that up so you can see it better, good. Okay, so when we look at this, you have all these muscles through here. We, you've heard, probably heard this before if you've ever been to a chiropractor, physical therapist, even, a, even a, um, a personal trainer will talk a lot about this, but your hip flexors, okay? From sitting all day long, from a lot of sitting, or even for athletes that do a ton of um, repetition sports like running, uh, baseball, soccer, kicking sports, things like that, these hip flexors right through here, Okay, and I hope y'all, let me make sure that I got this set here. Uh, I pushed something wrong here, give me a second. There we go. So these hip flexors right through here, this is called your iliopsoas muscle, and this will get really contracted and tight, and it'll actually pull your, your pelvis, okay, the pelvis part on the spine there, it actually pull that side forward. It'll create a rotation in your pelvis. If they go, both get tight, it'll pull your pelvis forward on both sides, and that's what they call that pelvic tilt that happens from a lot of sitting. You'll see it in track athletes especially because they get such tight hip flexors. But when it, your pelvis tilts, okay? Let me just show you on my spine here what, what's actually happening so you can understand it. Uh, let me put my video up here. So we got, when you take here, so you got this spine. Remember we got the pelvis here, the low back right here, and this is the pelvis. Whenever you have that pelvic tilt, here's what's happening. Okay, can y'all see how these joints here move? Okay, the pelvis tilts, it's actually gonna jam up these joints right here. So it jams those joints up. And if you could put pressure, and I've seen people come in literally looking like this almost with their back extended back like this, very common for athletes, very common for people that sit a lot, have, that have weak abdomens. And what will happen is those joints will become inflamed. Okay, and that's a simple inflammation in your joint that will cause pain. And that could be the number one reason you have back pain. And all that simply would take is adjusting your spine, getting those joints moving again, helping with some of the irritation, but at the same time, helping to, uh, helping to retrain those muscles and release those muscles so it doesn't keep it into a pelvic tilt, okay? So hip flexors are a really important part of that um, pain syndrome things that we'll see. If you look at the back of the, of the, uh, uh, the body and the muscles, you see the piriformis through here. So you got your piriformis right through here and you can see this yellow nerve coming through. That yellow nerve is your sciatic nerve. If you've ever heard of piriformis syndrome, that happens when that muscle gets tight and trigger points, it can actually irritate the nerve. Majority of time though, it's gonna come from the lower back and the tight piriformis is uh, causing pelvic issues and, and things like that that will cause the um, low back to be out of alignment. So when the pelvis rotates, all these muscles now have to adapt to that. And you'll see some shorten, some tighten, you'll get things called trigger points or scar tissue that will build up in them. So when you go to your doctor, when you go to a doctor or a chiropractor at least, and they start to adjust your spine, that's part of the process. That's getting joints moving and you'll feel better. To make that actually last though, you have to evaluate this musculature and see what it has to retrain, be retrained in there, what kind of scar tissue buildup has happened, and how do we retrain these muscles, okay? And on the back, you can see you have your quadricep lumborum muscle right here, very common area of, of pain, and those nerves in your lower back stem right out into those muscles, okay? So typically when someone comes in, they have a back problem, they say, oh, it's just my muscles are sore, or my mu it's a muscle problem. Well, let me tell you this, it's never just a muscle problem, unless it's just an acute, you just tore the muscle. If this is any kind of a chronic thing, and chronic means over 12 weeks, uh, I think over, I think it's over 12 weeks would be considered chronic. But even a short period of time, if you've been in a month, two months, and it hasn't been healing, it's not just a muscle issue. What happens is the, the spine will come out of alignment or not move properly. When that doesn't move, the muscles have to adapt and that's where you start to feel trigger points and so we think it's a muscle issue. Well, then the nerves become irritated and that's where we start to feel a lot of pain. So that's where it becomes more than just your, uh, your muscle issue. And this is the nervous system of your, of your body here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus in on the lower back. The left picture here, you see all these nerves that go all the way down your legs? So when somebody comes in and they have leg pain, can you see how that could directly relate to your back and most commonly relates to the back? Everything from cramping to straight pain to numbness to tingling, weakness, all that can literally stem right here in the lower two or three vertebrae in your back. That's all a huge issue. That big yellow one that goes right through the middle there, that's your sciatic nerve and that 
huge complex of nerves there. You can see how that can create all kinds of pains. It can create pain into the pelvis, it can create into the hip, into the buttocks area, all the way down to the feet. You could have tingling numbness in your toes and nothing else, and that could be stemming from your lower back. This colorful one over here, these are what we call dermatones, and this is, if you have lower back issues, Many times people come in and they have, and this is a, probably the most common one, is in the growing area, you feel like a numbness in the growing area, okay? When you feel that numbness in the growing area, that's a nerve or a dermatome being affected. If you've ever had like a, um, if you've ever had a surgery and they hit a nerve and it's numb, that's the dermatomal nerves, okay? That's a, the skin nerves, on, in other words. And it, that's for your feeling and you feel numb there because there's pressure or irritation or something affecting that nerve. So inner thigh, down the side of your leg, front of your leg, you can see they have numbers on it and that relates to different nerve root issues, different nerve roots of your spine. So, hey guys, I hope this is uh, benefiting you guys. I'm trying to go not too in depth, but at the same time, I wanna make sure that you get a good visual of how what is actually happening in your back. How does your back work? So that so you can start to figure out, hey, this is why I have pain. And so if you have sciatic nerve pain, you most likely have an L4, L5, S1 sacrum issue. If you're waking up with cramps in your legs, you most likely have a sacrum issue. Now, obviously there can be systemic blood flow issues and everything else, but from my experience, these are the most common reasons people have these things. Very common because we have so many back issues. If you have numbness in your legs, you could have a lower back issue. If you have pain right in those SI joints, right? right in the sides, each side, kind of like where the dimples of your back are, that could be an inflamed SI joint. If you extend back and your pain gets worse, you probably have an apophyseal joint issue, which I talked about just a second ago right here, okay? When it extends back like that too far, and you can have an apophyseal joint issue, okay? So, as we're looking through this, let's look at what do you actually do about this. So the first step is I wanted to teach you guys what, what how, how's the back work? What's, what's there? Why would you have pain? And I found that when patients can see this picture and they see their exact pain tracking on nerves, then it's like, okay, cool, there's the problem. The next step from that, once you kind of evaluate where it's coming from, you wanna take x-rays, you wanna see kind of a, a, a evaluation of posture, I want an evaluation of range of motion to see how well the body moves, and then also a, um, there's some chiropractic checks that we do, but then also x-rays will tell us, is there disc degeneration? Is there um, a, a misalignment in the spine where you actually can vertebrae can move in and out, or in, out of alignment and cause problems? Okay, so it's a, a really broad thing, but if you have a low back issue and you just start getting care but you never have x-rays, I'm not a big fan of that. We're, it, that's like shooting in the dark. You really don't know what you're doing. You can say, yeah, I've been doing this for years and I can feel it. I've been doing this for years and I've taken x-rays that blew my mind. I never thought I would see what was on them. That was actually on them and I was so glad that I took them. So we always take x-rays um, unless some reason we just can't, right? So. Let's talk about how do you actually help with low back pain. So I wanna give you guys some effective things that you can actually do at home for your low back, okay? So these are daily stretches and range of motion exercises. This is across the board unless one of these causes pain, okay? So if anything I'm teaching you today and you try it and it's painful, that means we gotta figure out what's causing your problem. We need to start to uh, probably adjust, get your spine moving again before you can do some of these. But if you can do these without pain, if you're someone that doesn't have low back pain, hey, maybe you want your spouse to make sure they never hurt their back because they're sitting all the time, these are the exercises you want them to do daily. And I mean every single day, even if, if you wanna do it twice a day would be beneficial. So on the left side, you have the six stretches for back pain. The thing I love about Google is I can just put in stretches for back pain, automatically these pop up and I can agree with them and they have good, visuals and everything else. So as you can see, I just literally stole these off of Google. You can find them too. So six, six stretches for back pain. The first one is that kneeling lunge stretch and I call that the hip flexor stretch. If you remember the psoas muscle that I just talked about right back here, okay? This muscle right here, that's what we're trying to stretch with this hip flexor stretch, okay? When it stretches the hip flexor, so you put your knees down, you lean forward and back and you should feel it right through the hip the growing area, okay? Right through the front of your of your thigh, okay? On the backwards thigh, not on the front knee. You shouldn't be feeling the stretch in the front knee. We're trying to get the back area right there, okay? So that's number one, okay? So feeling that hip flexor stretch. The second one here is when you just curl up into a ball. If you have a, a, a apoph apophyseal joint issues where you're extending or you have a pelvic tilt, curling up in that kind of like child po pose in that ball, on that ball like that, that helps relieve pressure off of those joints. And so you can hold that there for a good period of time. Now, if you have a disc issue, that might make it worse. So if it causes pain, that might mean there's a possibly a disc issue. This next one is your piriformis stretch. 
I had a patient that came in uh, last week and, and she could not even walk into our office, literally barely made it in there. We had to even take her to the, the closer room. I couldn't get her to our normal adjusting tables. She was in so much pain. And one of the things that allowed to where I could even work on her back and, and adjust her was this stretch right here. I mean, we held that stretch for a good, uh, and luckily she was able to get into that position. Sometimes you can't, but she was able to get in that position. We stretched and stretched and stretched, it felt like. And every time we'd come out of that stretch, she could move a little bit more and a little bit more to where we were able to now adjust her spine. And, and then now she's doing a whole, whole lot better. Not 100%, but I would say above 50% for sure. This hamstring stretch, our hamstrings get very tight from sitting all day. If you were an athlete, if you run a lot, you're gonna have tight hamstrings. And so it's really crucial to stretch them. You can do them sitting like this, and there's a lot of different ways you can stretch your hamstrings. Um, the lateral flexion stretch, that's more for the neck, so I'm not gonna focus on that today. But again, your whole body is connected. So if your neck is tight, one, I didn't even talk about this, this high, whole pelvic tilt issue or extension in the lower back that a lot of people are dealing with, that's causing their back pain can actually be because of a neck problem. If you have forward head posture and you've lost the curve in your neck, your, your eyes always wanna see straight. So if the top part of your neck isn't moving to look straight forward, you'll actually, here, let me show you on, on uh, an example of this, you'll actually do this. So if you're, if you're like this and your neck can't naturally go like this because it's locked up and not moving from sitting at a computer too much, you'll use your lower back and extend back. Does that make sense? Because your eyes always wanna see straight. That's the key is, is making sure that you can see straight is going to be the answer at the end of the day. Okay, cool. All right, let me pull this up here and we're going to keep going. All right, back and core strengthening. So we want to stretch every day. I want full range of motion. Actually, I skipped one of them. Let me go back. The next thing is exercise to prevent and reduce low back pain. These are full range of motion exercises. We call these wobble chair exercises. Every patient does these unless they can't before they get adjusted in our office. And you can see the different directions. If you wanna take a picture of that, uh, you can also just Google wobble chair exercises or spinal wobble chair exercises and you'll find a good example of this. This is an example of a chair. You could purchase this chair or you can just get a wobble cushion, a, a blow up cushion or even an exercise ball you could do these exercises on. And I would say 15 to 30 each direction doing that every single day it pumps the discs in your spine so we're supposed to be replenishing the fluid in our disc every single day they've said that the average American does that once a year okay so we're literally not moving enough and that's why we have so many issues with disc degeneration just so you know guys it's not genetic disc degeneration is not genetic if it was you wouldn't have it in one disc and not all the other ones it's always in the disc that's receiving the most stress meaning the one that's the most amount of spinal or pressure from gravity and your body weight is going into. That's why your spinal health is so crucial. And so these movements will actually keep those discs healthy if you don't have subluxation and damage already. Okay, these are your strengthening core exercises that I love people to do unless it, again, unless it causes pain. Tabletops, very simple for your lower back strength. Bridging, you can see that as well. Pilates crunches, uh, the dart, and that's kind of like the Superman concept there this front bridge this is like your plank you can do that on your knees or you can do that on your feet whichever you can do and some patients can't even do the knee one yet so I have them start out with their hands on a wall and walk their feet outwards until they can start to fill in their abs now I would say every day with planks do about one to three minutes of that every day and it doesn't have to be all at once but throughout your day just get in that plank position the core strength one of the reasons we get this pelvic tilt issue and, and low back issues is because our core is so stinking weak from sitting all day long Okay, and you can see these other ones on there as well, and you can take a picture of those for your uh, home exercises. Okay, anywho, all right, so let's keep going. All right, so this is ergonomics at the same time. So you do your work, you do your um, exercises every day. You also wanna make sure you're not causing more problems. If you're doing a lot of sitting at a computer, then you gotta make sure that you're moving properly, okay? So this movement is really, really important. And so moving every day is a key part of this. And so sitting in a computer, arms up like you can see in this picture in a good strong position okay for uh, instagram we'll post this picture on there so you can can look back at it but ultimately that you're in a good position your shoulders are back your elbows are on a rest and in the computer and the mouse is close to you not out like this which we talked about with neck pain can cause a lot of neck problems and that's a good support for your lower back when it comes to sleeping this is an, a lot this is another reason people will get back problems is they sleep on their stomach or they sleep with too, too many pillows or with their back completely twisted so this is how you wanna sleep, on your side, pillow between your legs, head even, not like this and not like this, and not crunched down like this, 
okay? If you sleep on your back, that's good too. You just wanna make sure you don't have too much pillows and maybe put a little bit of support underneath your knees for your lower back so it's not so arched. Now, when it comes to care for back pain, what kind of care do you actually need? I'm a, I, I, I always recommend staying away from the medical um, community when it comes to back pain. And here's the reason why. The reason we have an opioid epidemic is because the medical community has given opioids for back pain. They give medications for back pain. If those don't work, their next step is they'll do some physical therapy, which again, it works on muscles, but it doesn't work on the full spinal um, process. We do the physical therapy process as well. We wanna rehab the muscles and retrain the muscles, but you gotta get the spine moving, and that's why chiropractic care is by far the number one choice for low back pain. This study here, and this was from, let me just read it, the spinal manipulation, uh, comparison of spinal manipulation methods. And it said that 56% of medical care recipients had a 30% reduction in low back pain at four weeks. 94% of manually adjusted recipients had a 30% reduction in low back pain over four weeks. So compared to 56% to 94%, and there's no side effects and there's no medications, you're not causing gut problems from non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. You guys know that within the, week, within the month that you take a, a, a uh, an ibuprofen or some sort of an NSAID, your chance of a heart attack goes up by, I think it's 20 or 40%. It's at least 20%. I, thought, I think it might even be 40%, but your chance of a heart attack, this was from the Journal of American Medical Association last year. And so this is, the FDA said this, it should be a, a warning on these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So not only can you cause a heart attack, which makes me wonder how many people with heart attacks actually had them from, uh, uh, from ibuprofens and things like that, but I have people that are living on these every single day and they destroy your digestive system. The reason they destroy your gut is because it's a, they're COX-2 inhibitors. They block your body's ability to start to produce, to affect your stomach acid, and then in return, you start to get things like ulcers and stomach lining in, in, in your lining. So no bueno when it comes to the medication. Stay out of the medical community for this stuff. I'm telling you, you'll just be taken down a bad, bad cycle. Your first step, go to the chiropractor, find yourself a good one, find someone you like. If you're in Charlotte, come see us at Queen City Health Center and we'll start to evaluate. We'll take x-rays, we'll do posture range of motion uh, evaluations, we'll see how, how you're distributing your weight, we'll feel the musculature, we'll see what joints are moving, what aren't moving, and then we can start to provide care. And that care could be multiple things. It could be adjustments, like you see right here, we're actually moving the spine. It might be, uh, it might be some of the rehab and retraining of the muscles. It also might be a decompression. If you have a real disc issue, meaning the disc has leaked out of the um, out of the out of the disc space which we talked about earlier into the nerves then the one of the best things you can do is a decompression machine which tractions your body out and when you traction it it helps pull the disc back in and gets pressure off of that nerve it's a really cool technique and very simple as well and then along with that decompression now we can start to strengthen the core so that actually lasts
Now, every so often we'll have to do something like, so someone can get back to work, a back brace, right? Every so often if somebody just, they gotta get back to work, they can't rest at home anymore, then we'll give them a back brace to help support their body. But at, at the end of the day, I don't do a lot of e-stims or electrical stimulations or any of these techniques because the truth is, is they've never beaten the double-blinded study. Here's one thing you wanna know for sure, and this is what the research has shown, that the only thing that's ever beaten a double-blinded study in terms of back pain is chiropractic care. Let me say that again. The only thing that's ever beaten the double-blinded, I'm sorry, the placebo. The only thing that's ever beaten the placebo in terms of back pain is chiropractic care. Physical therapy hasn't. Uh, 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 any of the uh, uh, techniques in there, like the e-stim or the ultrasounds or any of the things, they've never beaten a placebo. The only thing that has is the actual adjustment. It's the only thing that's beaten the placebo in terms of back pain. So it is the place you wanna go for low back pain, okay? So here's some nutritional advice on this too, and a lot of people don't realize that your organ health and nutrition does play a big role in back pain. I've seen people that um, until we changed their diet and got rid of the inflammation that was constantly there, their back pain never went away. And so by eating a non-inflammatory diet, that means knowing what food allergies you have, that means staying away from bad fats, that means staying away from refined sugars and grains, and eating vegetables and good healthy meat that were raised the way they're supposed to. That's a non-inflammatory diet. We're reducing the amount of inflammation from your food. Anti-inflammatory supplements like turmeric, boswellia, those are two amazing ones to help reduce inflammation. Taking cod liver oil or fish oil helps make sure you have the right omega-3 balance so you don't create inflammation in your body. Hydration is a very important one as well. Hydration is huge. This is what will, um, the disc are mostly water and electrolytes. And so the first place that will actually disappear or dehydrate when you're dehydrated and you haven't had enough water is your disc space. So making sure you're drinking enough quality water, and I always like to uh, I always like to recommend putting a pinch of sea salt in there because that's the um, type of electrolytes that your body actually has, and it's very good for your discs. That's actually something we'll give patients after they get adjusted is electrolyte water. Bone broth is another great one, and collagen for the connective tissue throughout your spine and musculature. So those are some great simple nutritional tips when it comes to. Um, things you can do for back pain. And here's the thing, guys, to get lasting results, it's not just about getting your back cracked, it's not just about going to a physical therapist, it's not just about taking a medication. None of those things are answers for your back pain. Those are things that can be supportive, but at the first step, you need a process to actually get results that will last, not something where you went and, and, and you get your back, to, and I've had patients that all they, want, they just wanna get adjusted. They don't wanna do any of the rehab, they don't wanna do any of that stuff, and here's what happens. They get adjusted, their back pain goes away. A month later, two months later, maybe it's three months later, they come back because their back pain's worse and it's still there because they never actually corrected the problem. There's just enough pressure, enough irritation off of those nerves so they didn't feel the pain anymore. The first step is you gotta find the cause. You have to figure out what's happening. So we go through testing. I mentioned that. We go through range of motion testing, postural analysis. We go through actually feeling, your, uh, feeling what's moving in your spine, what's not moving. And then finally, the best one that tells us the most is x-rays. And if it's bad enough, maybe it's an MRI, but we try to stay away from that because it's not very expensive and not usually necessary. Uh, second, restore the motion into the joint. If you want to heal, you have to get spinal motion and proprioceptive motion is huge. Hey, your back problem could actually be causing your hormone problem, believe it or not. The stress that comes from that can create all kinds of other health issues, immune system problems, hormone problems, everything. So we gotta restore that motion so you can feel better. Restore biomechanics next. So making sure we're getting the structure back into your spine, the curve back in your neck, the proper curvature in your low back, and then if you have a scoliosis or a curvature and you're, and you're from the side, working to reduce that or keeping it from getting worse depending on how severe it is. And then retraining the body. Finally, maintain proper ergonomics. Look at what you're doing on a daily basis at home. How do you sit at the desk? How are you sleeping? What do you do when you're lifting? What do you do on, when you're gardening? Do you warm up before you go outside and garden or you just go right and start bending over and hold that for a long period of time? When you wake up in the morning, is the very first thing you do is get up and put your socks on and bend over. Get your body moving before you do anything and that will get disc flow moving, that will get everything warmed up so it doesn't wanna tear so easily, okay? Cool, all right guys, so that is your back pain under uh, 101. This is you understanding back pain. Hopefully you got a lot out of that. Hopefully um, something just triggered in your mind that makes you wanna do something about your back problem. And if you don't have back problems, hopefully I gave you some um, 
precautionary things you can do to make sure that you never get back problems as well. Okay, and remember, you gotta move throughout your day. If you're not moving, you're going to end up with a back problem. I can promise you that. So share this video with people. Hey, connect with us as well. If you haven't joined the Queen City Health Center, uh, Your Health Now, Facebook page, make sure you join that. That's our way of making sure we can connect with as many people as possible. We're always sharing uh, recipes and all kinds of cool stuff on there. Make sure you get connected on that. Just has to be invited uh, every day, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 p.m. We're shooting Shift Your Thinking, Shift Your Health. Tuesday's a quick tip. Thursday is going to be uh, really the long 45 minutes to an hour just diving into it. Last week we talked about eczema. This week we're gonna talk about another skin problem. We're actually gonna talk about acne. Um, and and I, I realized how much how bad skin problems are, so I figured let's start talking about that more often. And then um, uh, go on iTunes, look at our, check out our podcast. We got a podcast called Owning Your Health. It's a new thing we just started with a few of my buddies and it's, it's awesome. We're having a good time doing that. We have a few recorded already. If you want help personally, go on our website, go to queenchealthcenter.com, schedule yourself an appointment time, or you can schedule a 15 minute phone console if you just wanna talk and see if we can help you. As always, you can, you can instant message me as well. So hey guys, I hope you got a lot out of that. Like this, love it, share it. Just give, your, give me your feedback. I'm trying some new techniques with these videos, being able to do PowerPoints and things like that. And let me know how you like it. So tell me if, you, if you'd rather just see it the other way, I don't know. But make sure we're learning things as well. So hey guys, you have an awesome day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.